So Today let's do a slideshow. Yay. Let's not uh, waste the time anymore. So, uh, guys, dear artists, dear painters, and etc., I'm really happy today to represent my webinar, my lecture regarding the social etiquette and how to represent yourself at the exhibition and networking events. But first of all, I would like to represent myself and tell you who I am and who with you're going to spend the next one and a half hour. Uh, and on the next slide, there will be a short self presentation. So, my name is Marie Lesidis and I'm a British, Russian, and European etiquette specialist. And you can see if our all my uh, uh, description all about me so again let's go further and start with the plan so and today we're going to speak first of all about self-presentation then it, it will be the biggest topic when where will we discuss about how to represent yourself in the social and a little bit in the business um environment so this is really the biggest part and we'll be speak most of the time about self-presentation then i'll i'll explain to you how to write the business letters and how to respond on them so basically with the business correspondence so also if we have a time we'll speak about basic table a buffet etiquette so uh, the type of etiquette which you will need on the exhibitions and a little bit of a dress code. So let's move to the next slide and start. Um, so first of all, um, what is social etiquette? The social etiquette is the type of rules what you use when you communicate with the other people in a social environment. But you don't need to be afraid of the word rules because here is not just like in the school that everything needs to be exact. The whole etiquette is depends on the situation. And sometimes in the different situations with the different people around different society, you will act in the different way and all of this will be in the etiquette um frames so but today i created my presentation around the mock situation um if for example you are on an exhibition on an exhibition um where you can represent yourself or you visit in the present the exhibition of the other people or just not working around the other people so first of all every self-representation start with entering the room and we go into the next slide yeah and with entering the room uh with in the great britain it was many different researches regarding of the first impression and the um, most famous of them are two first of all for, first uh, research says that you have only seven seconds for to show people who you are to, to make people think about you anything and the second research says that you have only 0 0.1 seconds so you basically don't have any time to enter in the room to say a word, self tent or anything, you already present yourself with the first look. So, but we so first search, you have a seven seconds. So, so, with this set, seven seconds, you can uh, try to show the best of, your, of yours. So, who are important things here? First of all, is, of course, it's a manner of speaking. So, your speech always must be clear uh, without any um, words which just makes you look as a professional then the posture is very important so if you are kind of 
um, not keeping your back straight or the chin parallel of the floor, you will never show the, that self-confident impression for the people. So you, your posture always needs to be um, confident. So first of all, it's your back. You need to keep your back straight all the time. So I think uh, maybe, maybe I will say something very simple and even banal, but um sometimes you know maybe so, someone of you was in a situation then you are looking to the mirror and you see a very confident and nice person but after networking event you look at the photos of what the photographer made and you look at yourself and you don't see that person so it's something strange with your hair or probably with your posture or maybe your hands a little bit like uh, leaning towards and your shoulders so this is why posture during the whole networking or any event or in exhibition presentation all this needs to be straight and i will show i will explain you even one exercise how to keep it straight for example you always need to just imagine that the one string is goes through your body and someone is like a um you know like a christmas um a toy is just pulling you on this um on this rope so and you need to straight your back like this so the other thing is the gestures, of course. Too much of gestures always says that you not, don't have enough of the words. Or a lack of gestures are not very good because it doesn't show you as the alive person, as a lively person. Also, neatness. You always need to be um, praised, direct, and just look professional. And of course, even appropriate attire and behavior. I know it's also sounds very obvious, but sometimes um, not all people understand um, the way how they're supposed to look for a particular um, event. For example, if people go to the morning session wearing glittery dresses or for example on the evening event uh, wearing the linen dress or so so you always need to make sure that you are dressed appropriately if you're not sure what you are dressed appropriately just ask the host or sometimes on the event invitations you will see the dress code if you don't see the dress code and you are not sure what to dress and how to look better you always can ask the horse it's absolutely fine to clarify so when they go farther to the next slide also it's very important thing to have the eye contact with the other people so the eye contact this makes you also you're confident and sometimes people do you know sometimes i think every one of you was in a situation when you were talking to the person but this person is not looking to your eyes um send your comments if you're ever been in this situation and how did you feel having it not really good yeah um so the this is kind of the eye contact is the um, type of a body language and for example uh, you can read the impression of yours when you are talking to someone how is the people reacting to you for example if eyes are open and mouth is slightly open so it implies understanding interest and engagement of person to you for example, if I like this, if eyes are open but mouth is closed like this, uh, it implies skepticism. District of that the person you are speaking is unsure what you are saying, 
Or, for example, eyes can be pinched like this and mouth open. So when the person is thinking, interest in digesting the information. So these and the other examples uh, you can remember or make a further research of the rules of the eye content. So um, if you're really interested in the people or particular person you are on the event, you must know these rules because you will have the better understanding what drawing them around. So it's a non-verbal point. So let's go further to the next slide. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> then when you enter in the, in the room and you had the eye contact, you obviously have a um, calling your name to someone and uh, the other person is calling his name. But we never remember the names, guys. If it's an event with a lot of people around you, and it's really, really difficult to remember all the names. So this is why um, I'm going to provide you three different effective methods of remembering the name. These methods are very famous among all CEOs or owners of the big businesses. So they know this rule, they practice it, and they remember the name. So today I'm sharing, I'm gonna share it with you. So first of them is meet and repeat. For example, you are meeting some person and you're saying, hello, my name is Maria, nice to meet you. And the other person is saying, hello, my name is Anna, nice to meet you. And you're saying, Anna, nice to meet you. Anna, you repeating this name? and pronouncing in your mind so and just kind of printing on your mind the appearance of a person and the name and pronouncing nice to meet you anna so uh the next uh method is to pronounce the name in front of a person for difficult and rare names letter by letter for example i have i used to have a colleague in my uh the company uh, i used to work uh in the past and her name was zelfi it's not a very difficult name just a few letters but still very unusual name so and um uh, for example if i sort of meet up with zelfi but i never met her before i'm gonna say hello my name is maria nice to meet you and she's gonna reply hello my name is zelfi nice to meet you and is it absolutely perfect to ask, oh, Zelfi, is it Z-E-L-P-H-I? And she'll say, oh, yeah, thank you, that's correct. Now, this rule works only for the difficult names. This is why all people who have a difficult, who has a difficult name, they always know that people forget their names. And this is why it will be, even will put the forward to remember the person name and he will definitely or she will definitely appreciate these extra steps to remember the names but it never works or walk works silly way if you try to remember in that way the simple name we will not work with a name for example tom you say and hello my name is marie nice to meet you hello my name is tom nice to meet you too and you'll say oh nice to meet you tom it's like t-o-m and she will say, oh, yes. <laughs> so make sure you ask for difficult names. So, and the first method is association. So you meeting people, you greeting person. And for example, someone saying to you, my name is, okay, let's say Harry. And then you remember in your mind, okay, Harry, uh, Harry Potter, Prince Harry. So, and then you are, put the parallel to this person with the association name it can be the other person this can be even subject or so so you need to practice try to catch up with your friends go to the birthday of your friends or anyone around the people you don't know and try to remember the, those names it works i promise you uh the my maximum of remembering 15 new names 
in the multicultural um, situation. So try the three methods. Um, I forget names in the seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Especially when you're in the new environment, everything is new around you, especially if you are entering the room and it's already a lot of people around you. So let's go further. Uh, on a, um, even if you know this method and even if you remember all the names, sometimes one of the names you will always forget. And it's sometimes really a shame to forget the words, especially if the person is very important for you. Eugenia says, is it okay to ask if I couldn't hear or get the name from the first time someone pronounced the name? Yeah, and this is how you're going to ask it. So instead of asking, I forgot your name or I couldn't hear your name, could you please repeat it? You, you better say, could you please remind your name? Is better phrase to say. Yeah. And if you, if you, if you, if you, if you didn't hear, yeah, you can say, could you please repeat your name? Yeah. And also I have a bonus method for a conversation, but it works only in English. In, in Russian, it doesn't work in other languages. Um, if you are a language speaker, um, you can try, but I'll tell you. So, okay, this bonus method works. My um, etiquette teacher, my British etiquette teacher shared with me this method. Um, he was not working with uh, a lot of people around on some events. He was talking and chatting with uh, one person ready for 15 minutes. We discussed all mutual interest and everything. Uh, but he absolutely forgot his name. And then he saw his friend was approaching them. The friend, his name, he perfectly knew. And my teacher knew he has to introduce them to each other. And he's going to be in not a really nice situation because he doesn't remember the name of the person who was speaking for the past 15 minutes. So this is how he um, done. So basically, he introduced his friend. He said, that's my friend, Tom. And would you please remind your name? He asked the person. And, and this person said, oh, he said, my name is Jack. I said, oh, Jack, of course I remember your name. I meant the surname. Because, you know, in English, name is a general uh, word for a name and a surname. So, and he kind of said what he meant the surname, but he meant the name because he forgot the name. So this is how it's been introduced in an official way. So this is how you can you can use it in the English speaking uh, events. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Okay. We introduce to each other, and next we're gonna have the chat about this or about that. So basically, it's a small talks in all the societies. Is it the European society or uh, Eastern societies are different appropriate topics or different taboo topics? But most of the topics are general, and today. I'm going to share with you what topics can be taboo. Maybe you guys know what topics are taboo in the social um, society. If you know what topics are taboo, could you please type them? I'm just curious if you are familiar with that, or maybe you can um, turn on your microphone and share. I know it's difficult, uh, or politic religion, who are so politic, but not. No, I guess. Yeah, that's very. Um, that's correct. Political religion, criticizing of the royal family. <laughs> the last one is debatable salary. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, I can see, guys, you are you you're thinking in an absolutely correct way. But I'm going to tell you all the topics. 
Anna, could you share please the next uh, slide? Okay, so these are all the topics. So first of them is age. So and the topics what can cause people to argue except art. Uh, that's correct, but you, you never know sometimes. Even very innocent topic can be uh, turned to very aggressive uh, debates or even arguing. Yeah, okay, let's go to the first. First is age. It can be direct or indirect question. For example, obviously you can directly ask the age. But sometimes people are tricky and can ask indirect questions. For example, they can say, um, do you remember the times when in the childhood we were watching Tom and Jerry cartoon? So the person will say, oh yeah, remember that my first cartoon or so. So we will say the person is 30 plus years old or so. And in the, in the person will say, oh, I never saw it's like a little bit old fashioned cartoon. So that will be say, so this is like 20 or under age. So it's an indirect question. I and mean, this is not the correct question. So you just need to avoid those questions unless it will be a very appropriate situation for the age. Uh, my next is appearance and the weight. I think I don't need to explain to you. So this is very obvious things here. So money, prices and salary levels, including an indirect questions. Um, like you've gained a guest. So what can be as an uh, as indirect question? For example, uh, my never British uh, etiquette teacher told us a very interesting example of uh, how the one gentleman in a very high society was asking indirect questions about the salary and level of the life. He was asking a very simple question. Um, how many windows is in your house? So if a person was saying, oh, I have three windows. So which means he has a very small house and he can't afford to have a big house. If the person was like, um, one, two, or oh, let me think, blah, 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 eight, nine. So yeah, you understand if, you, if he is counting, not sure how many windows means this person is can afford to keep the big house means the, um, the salary is big if he can afford it. So this is a kind of indirect question and you need to, you to avoid questions like this or now you can catch questions like this so because sometimes people ask the tricky questions regarding your salary but we are never guess it straight away okay um next is the personal relationship sexual identity and sexual preferences yeah here is the obvious as well i think it doesn't need uh, to um, uh, explain political religion also classical topic complaining so it was running late it was a rain you don't have a space to put your umbrella you're on a very wet trench coat also you meet in the person you said oh the weather is so bad i'm just soaked or so so this is will be the very start good start of conversation so avoid anything oh as Prosecco, I expected champagne. The last time with champagne was much better. So this is kind of, yes, people will understand, but you are, have a difference between champagne and, and uh, Prosecco. So the alcohol is the top topic you can talk, but this is a kind of complaint. So you don't have to start with topics like this. Also health, also very obvious topics. Um, especially if you have any sort of problems, health problems, and also rumors, gossip and scandals around you. Okay, what topics are appropriate if we go to the next slide? And here is the same thing. So guys, um, could you please type or switch on the microphone? And what topics do you think are recommended social topics in the social environment? or your specific topics in your art industry or so. Uh, it's interesting to note how manners change. In Bernard Shaw, Pignolion, it was mentioned that one can talk about the weather and 
everyone's health. Um, but I think it is in a positive way, not in a negative way. I was better, oh, um, my, my skin is shining on this summer sun. Oh, what do you think? Um, is any ideas? I think you guys, you are social people, and what do you usually start with? When you are on the social events, when that work is. However, okay. But here you also need to be careful because anyone around you can be a potential potential client, especially for for the long term relationship. Um, where you can talk about the current event, uh, raising the cost, with recent events and exhibition. It sounds very good, hard work, as long as the uh, exhibition open. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Um, Annie, could you please uh, jump to the next slide? And we'll see. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Weather, classic. Classical topic, but here is the one point. Um, I personally would not recommend you to start with the weather with every single person, only because the weather is too obvious topic. Because sometimes, if you start with the weather, at least in the British society, maybe even even in European, in Russian, in Slavic society, it will be better if it's even will show you. Um, in a more polished way of beginning the conversation, but in the British society, sometimes it's a little bit um, too simple to start the conversation because everyone, every single person knows about weather. So it means you read somewhere about this weather and you have to start with weather and nothing else you know. So it's kind of like basic package. This is why better to start with the other topics, but sometimes if the weather is extraordinary today, for example, if it's like, let's say July and it's snow in July or plus 20 in London in December. So this is, in this situation, you, you yeah, yeah, that will be absolutely fine to start with the weather. In other situation, let's try to start with something different. Mm, where else we have complimented the details of someone attire um yes but um when you continue conversation not the not as the first words so okay so one of them is a traveling it's also not kind of the, the, the number one first conversation but you can you can start for example um oh you look very you, know, you look very tired. Did you travel recently somewhere? And the, the person will say, Oh, I just got back from New Zealand. And, and you can start, oh New Zealand, I was dreaming to go there. Tell me more about it. It's very interesting. Or for example, you can say, um, I'm planning to have some two days get away next weekend. Do you have any recommendations? And the person will say, Oh, like. Novi Sad is probably the really good sea town to to get, or Brighton the seaside. If you speak about um, British towns, uh, next is your surroundings. So it's people around you. You can you can say um, the person, "Are you alone here?" And you can say, um, yeah, basically I'm alone, but I know a few people here. For example, this person is my friend and you can point someone and say, we know each other for many years and then start, continue the conversation. Then next is a general cultural news. So here we're not discussing political news or economical news. news. Here we discuss more something again. If it's for you, if it's art exhibition, so the news in art, for example. So 
what you think about the London freeze in 2024. What painters do you expect to be there? Oh, then next is the mutual friends. You, if the first, it will be the host. You can ask, how do you know the host? Oh, you used to study together in art school. That's interesting because she was mentioned me about the few students she was in a good relationship with. I probably you are one of them. So this is how you can start. Then children. But here is a very red flag, but it because it's optional. So in um, the European society, you only can start the conversation if the other person mentioned children, for example. He said, um, I'm here with my children. They are 14 years, they are 14 and 16 years old, and they are just in the other room. And you say, oh, children, that's good. And my children are blah, 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 if you have them. So, but you never start of asking for children. But this is doesn't work, for example, in Eastern culture, especially in the Arab culture. For example, for them, it's top three questions they ask as the first topic. So, and if you will, will be talking to someone with the uh, Arab roots, or you probably will be somewhere in the Dubai or other countries, and they start to talk about children. So. That's fine. So this is very a cultural thing. And the last but not least is the sport, of course. For example, in the Great Britain, sport is a very big deal because um, Great Britain is a very the country where we like to play different types of sports. We like to watch sport and etc. I'm pretty sure each country has their own national type of sport and people speak about it but here is also optional review because i know our people are not people of sport so this is but you can you can at least adapt and this is can be one of the topics you can talk to okay i think i had some messages um why you can start conversation with complimenting yes of course you can start but comp complimenting the person himself but it also needs to be a little bit the um, subtle, not direct. If you will say, "Oh, that's a really this dress is suits you," this will be a little bit. Not all the people um, know how to take the compliments sometimes. And if you're talking to the new person, if you say, "Oh, that red dress is suits you." You look so stunning in this dress, and it will be sometimes people can be puzzled and will will not know how to reply to you. Should they reply complimenting back, or should I just say thank you? Or so this is why better not to start imagining, yeah, just play in this situation in your mind. So also not very mm -hmm. if you already talk to the person for five, ten minutes, you can you can feel it. But it, this is a good topic to continue with complimenting or why can I can I start a conversation from a complaint isn't a short experience if it's about traffic weather or something like that because it's a negative topic so they use it's a self-presentation so you need to start with a positive uh, like I said you have only seven seconds of impression obviously you're not gonna say in this seven seconds what the weather is but still the first First look, first topic, and first everything is gonna create your portrait of your personality in the people's mind. And if you can, if you will start the conversation, with, will complain, and the person will paint in, in their minds the person of all. Oh, that's a complainer. Okay, I'd, I'd rather go to talk to someone who is gonna tell me about the uh, traveling or so. Also, don't answer the how are you question with explaining how you really are yeah you if, if it's um if you speak on um uh, in english <laughs> so for example yeah then you said yeah and if you speak in english and you represent so you you call your name my name is maria nice to meet you 
or you say, um, my name is Maria, how do you do? Sometimes you say, and the other person, he is not replying, how is he doing, what he is doing. He also said, my name is Mark. And again, he's saying, how do you do? And that's it. And I'm not saying fine or I was traveling one and a half hour instead of 13 minutes. No, how do you do? It's also it's very formal way of responding. But when, when someone saying to you, how do you do? You never respond, never. This is just the British way of saying nice to meet you. And nice to meet you itself, it's less formal way to say um do you have any questions regarding any other question regarding this topic if not we can go further okay social kisses is one of the way how you meet and greet people so but here you need first of all you need to understand but you never actually kiss the person so then you are Meeting the person, especially if you're such a country as like uh, songs or when the kisses are very big deal. So you slightly touch the cheek of the person or not even touch, just go very close to the cheek, but not the touch and do a very uh, quiet sound of kiss like. And then if it's a country where they have the two kisses, you go and do the second kiss. So and they always begin with the uh, kiss with the right cheek. So also the amount of kisses always different, and sometimes you don't know the person gonna kiss once or twice. Uh, send me any reaction if you was in a situation when you don't know to kiss one time or two times because people sometimes are uh thinking differently yeah so this is a very cultural thing as well so here is a trick what i'm gonna tell you um can you see on the both pictures people are holding the shoulders so if you kiss the person one time a kiss the air keys basically practically so he's the other person and holding the shoulder if the person will lead him to give the other keys his shoulder the other shoulder the left shoulder will move together and will you will feel with your head this is how you, you will feel that the second keys is common this is how you will uh, go for a second keys the person is kissing you one time the shoulder was stay still and better to know how many kisses will be by knowing the cultural rules for example in the great britain in the uk there is a different rules of kissing so people in the countryside usually kiss to each other once in the right cheek people in big towns kiss to each other two times Russian people in the Russian and Slavic culture, most of the Slavic cultures, kissing once. And for example, such a country as like Poland, the Netherlands, they kiss three times, one, two, and three. So if you are on an exhibition or networking, wherever, and you need to meet the particular person, you really keen to meet and know better the particular person. You need to know where is he or she from. So with a better understanding of the cultures are as well and social kisses is one of them. You will know how better to kiss. There are many different literature of the difference in the culture. If you really will be interested, I will I can send you the list of this literature in English language. It's very easy to read. It will be like for example, Greece and all aspects of how to deal with Greek people. Next page, like Albanian people. Next page, um, Swedish people or so. It's very interesting. Okay. Um, a Serbian Sava was kissed triple times, Slava. Yeah, also very interesting fact, I didn't know that. Okay. So, and now after 2020, after COVID-19, we are a little bit de decreased the number of kisses. Also make sure if the person, especially 
who are the most interesting to me are going to kiss you, you will reply. If you don't want to kiss, I will tell you later what will happen. So hugs. Hugs is only between friends. If you don't know the person, you never hug. In the more or less uh, professional environment, if you're somewhere in, I don't know, like people invited you on a birthday at someone's house. So, and it's very informal party. So yeah, you can hug there. All this, you put all to consideration how formal is this um, party or event and all the rules, all the rules of etiquette is appropriate as more formal as more rules we use. So uh, next slide, please. Non non contact greetings. Yeah, after the pandemic, um, we more and more use non contact greetings. Here is the typical examples of them. First of all, first of them, and the more, most favorite, and I really like it, is the um, uh, put your right hand to the heart, and you can say, "Hello, nice to meet you." Um, you can use it instead of shaking a hand. For example. Um, with the shake of the hand, if you're a man, you never just give your hand to the woman. Between men, yeah, you take the hands as a normal, you just give your hand to each other. With the women, if it's a man and a woman, if woman wants to take a hand, she will touch with the hand and you will but men never do it first so and for example if you're the woman and the man doesn't know this rule and you don't really want to shake your hands it's very personal i'm not judging here anyone so sometimes you just yeah i'm not in the mood just don't want to shake someone's hand or you have a virus or so so if someone is the um pulling a hand to you but you don't want to shake it it's absolutely fine to do this sign slightly knock your head and say my name is marie nice to meet you so second one is just the nod in the hand very uh eastern way of um non cotton greetings it's also fine the first it's third is namaste um it's fine but in some cultures in some events and look strange so this is why i recommend if you are a non-contactor so use the first with the hand on the heart and we go to the next slide um yeah and before i will start uh, of uh, this topic also a few words about the shaking the hand you never shake a hand when you are sitting so you need to stand up and shake the hands and the second one, you never shake a hand across the table or across anything. It needs to be the empty, everything um, under you needs to be empty. No table, no any other surfaces. So and you shake in a hand. So, and the next topic is how to correctly introduce people to each other in a social setting. It's also very interesting because sometimes the two people you do know who to who represent first? Um, do you have any ideas? For example, um, if I um, let's say came to the social event with my husband and I see um, my friend, female friend, who should I represent first? husband to my female friend or female friend to my husband do you have any thoughts about it if someone approached me and my friend i'll introduce a friend for approaching them first no idea <laughs> good point and then the next slide will be the answer so here is the formula. So um, especially if you make a print screen for yourself and uh, remember to use this formula for the next representation. So younger 
we introduce to older men, we introduce to women. So I will introduce my husband to my female friend. If it's a social etiquette, here I need to highlight this topic. In the business etiquette, it's slightly different because in the business etiquette, there are no gender identity. So men will be equal to women, and here will be just a status, who is a higher of status, and we will reproduce to that person. So, and here we use the third formula is less important to more important. Just remember, less to more important. Do you have any questions so far regarding presentation? It sounds very easy, but when you are in a social event and it's a lot of people, and especially if it's three, four or five people, even the two people, you completely forget this role. This is why I recommend you to catch up with your best friends or even with your family and try to play this mock kind of game um, and represent to each other. This is how we will really learn how to do it. Okay, so, okay. Um, and let's talk about the groups and the um, social events. Guys, can you tell me or send the reaction if you have uh, difficulties to join in the groups in the social events? For example, you enter in the room, you see the people around you, and you don't know if it's okay to join them, or they talk crazy to each other, and they don't know, like, they will not know how to start to talk to you, or it's strange or fine. And you're just standing and looking around, thinking, who are you going to join and try to catch the eye contact with someone, hoping he will just wave you and say, hey, join us. But no one is actually waving you and you're still trying to get the drink at the first seat and still continuing to think who you're going to join. And then some one person is joining you. Yeah, you've been to the situation, right? I see your reactions. I have no problem enjoying them. Is the way I do that the questionable? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's very individual, but let's first of all talk about the uh, two different types of groups. So first of them is the open groups in social society. So these are on the picture, pictures are examples. First of the rule of them, the group is like um have a half circle shape. So it's not a closed group, like a circle. So it's opened group. And you can see people are kind of, with their body and language are inviting you to join. And second, it is, it's their uh, shoes. If their shoes are have the open shape, as you can see on these gentlemen, especially on the pictures from the right, see their shoes uh, have a very, um, have an open position. Yeah, which means, yeah, you can join us. And also the eye contact, of course. But eye contact can never work on the 100%. So in this way, you can join those group absolutely perfectly and just um, say hello and uh, introduce yourself and just join the conversation and just listen to what they're saying and, and continue. Okay, and in the next slide, we will see the closed groups in the social society. You can see as an opposite, so groups are closed. It's very kind of even physically difficult to uh, join this group. So you're trying to from this side, from that side, and you can see people already talking, chatting, maybe even arguing sometimes. And also, also their boots are always together and facing to, to each other faces. So as in the picture from the right. Okay, so and let's do the uh, go to the next slide and I will do um, some exercise with you. Okay, what do you think? Would you join to these two people? Just put yes or no to the chat. Mm -hmm. You can use this no and this also. No. 
put any reactions if you would join any of them here. No. What? Yes. Most of the people says no. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Here is a, a little bit strange group, even without seeing their sh shoes and what are they facing is. But here is a, a kind of slightly mixed group because the man is kind of fine to join if someone will join. But woman is would not like anyone to join uh, this pair. So let's go to the next slide. Would you join these people? <laughs> In Kenya. <laughs> they seem as politicians. No. <laughs> Blood, no. <laughs> okay, send the reaction if you if you easily join it. Probably not, but I could try to ask them to let me go. Okay, here's also it's a mixed group. So one person obviously fine to join as you can see the um his body is um turned to the other slightly turned to the other people as well as his shoes and the other person is not as a topic starter okay and the next slide and this group And for all people who will be watching this webinar in the recording, you just pause it for a second, have your opinion, and then continue to watch. So I saw a few reactions. Reactions means yes. And Harry looks approachable, <laughs> which is open group, but not sure we will let any of us join. <laughs> yes, absolutely open group, and I'm pretty sure this group will definitely let you approach if you are on the same event with them. Um, so, this is how you can, you will be able to try. Even before event, if you're writing down some points, reread it before events. If you have this uh, webinar in recording, re-watching or re releasing, so and you um, will remember and you will notice these small uh, points on an event. So okay, let's go to the another another um, slide. Okay. Also, the one important thing what I wanted to mention you is a high context and low context culture um before i start um studying etiquette as uh, in a professional way i never know what's that and i never split cultures in the different way but cultures are different and uh, need to be treated in a slightly different way, and especially if we know um, what it is. For example, it's like it's very different different um, way um, in which we achieved um, the way we approach the um, culture. For example, in Japan, sneeze or blow the nose in the front of someone would be the, one of the rudest things a person to do. Whereas the best of the country is someone sneezes, they sneeze if they need to blow their nose. So it's kind of fine. Um, and um, for example, it's not good etiquette to drink from the finger bowl of course but it's even worse manners to laugh at someone who doesn't know the form that it is part of their culture 
the Prince of Wales deliberately broke etiquette in order to be of more well-mannered. We have to know the rules of etiquette and protocol in order to break them the style, confidence and diplomacy. Um, the many persons will wrongly assume what the form of their own country applies in others, not understanding that there are key difference between um, countries is the most basic of mistakes someone can make. Experience, travel and tolerance are usually the best ingredients for gaining the elements of being worldwide. But there is um, 1976 theory developed by American anthropologist Edward T. Hall in his book Beyond Culture that gives some foundation of understanding the difference between certain countries. Uh, next is Hall. Uh, concluding that cultures can be split into high context or low context. The theory is based on how uh, explicit the messages exchange are and how important are the context in the communication. So let's go to the next slide and I will show you an example of a high context uh, main criteria of the countries. So first of them is indirect and in implicit messages. So in these type of countries, um, people can say, okay, I'll, I'll, I will open you the secret of one of the countries is, for example, Russians are in a high context main, uh, um, culture. So sometimes we can ask, let's say, um, um, that's a nice bag. What do you mean? So we ask in question on the question, or in direct questions, or polychromic time system. So we can do two different things at the same time. So it's basically the multitasking. Um, I thought you'd say Britain. <laughs> Uh, widespread use on non-verbal communication. So we use gesture, a lot of gestures. Like, That's so big painting. So it's with a lot of emotions. Low depends on, on written communication. So for example, if you're going to catch, catch up with something, open. okay, let's have a meeting tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Deal? Deal. So we're not putting the message, okay, I confirm we're going to catch up tomorrow at 3 p.m. We're not putting writing. So we're just pronouncing and that's it. The same for the social and business etiquette. Predominant use of intuition and feelings when making decisions. So, so the feeling art, or it's many other countries, not just Russian culture. So when you make a decision, oh, it feels like I just feel I need to start this business. I have my intuition rather than calculation, the analytic and the other more direct aspects. Long-term relationship. If we speak about business, okay, let's let's speak about the painting business. For example, if you have your customer who you always have some, let's say, portraits, and you have a price of, let's say, one thousand pounds. But after a few years, you increase your price, and your artwork already one thousand five hundred British pounds. But you have a very long relationship with this customer, and you still will say to him, "Give you one thousand pounds." So you will rather keep this relationship, but not increase. So um, relationship in general come first, second to time frames and schedules. So here is about to running late. For example, if a person is running late 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, the people from high context culture so I will never pay attention to it. So they will never judge people, they will wait and when we meet them we will say nothing. Maybe we will fix something like you don't appreciate my time, we will never say anything. And strong difference between insiders and outsiders. 
So we understand who is our people or not our people. So, and then the next slides are the list of the high context cultures. So it's African, Arabic, Brazilian, Chinese, Filipino, French, Canadian, French, Greek, Hungarian, Indian, Indonesian, Italian, Irish, Japanese, Korean, Latin American, Pakistani, Persian, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, South and West Slavic, Thai. I'm pronouncing everything what is written here. Listening but not watching <laughs> this webinar recording. Okay. Is it kind of understandable? So you know someone from this culture which clicks with your culture. Yeah. Okay, then the low context countries which have the different descriptions. So this is direct, simple, and clear message messages. So Mm, nothing strange, nothing regarding the indirect topics. So, monochromic time system. So, I'm busy now with this task. Could you please call me back in one hour? I will tell you, or something like this. And frequent use of nonverbal communication. So, these people are tall, just tall. They're open their mouth and the speech is their, their number one priority. Priority of written communication. And basically here is the, mostly about the confirmation of something what was pronounced verbally. So these people will every time have the written confirmation just as clear as they can provide you with information. Use the facts or scientific evidence to make decisions. Here is the opposite of the intuition and feelings. Short and frequent business relationship. So here is, let's say, another example of the paintings. So you have um, every year a client who gives you 1,000 pounds and you increase your price to 1,500 and you tell them, so my new price, I have to increase my price to 1,500 pounds if the person will say, oh, unfortunately, I can't afford this price, you would rather stop the relationship with the customer because this is this is your time and you appreciate your time and you will take another customer who can afford this £1,500 rather will continue with the person well-known but can't afford this money. Uh, effective type management, prioritizing relationship. Here is the opposite of waiting someone for one hour. So here is a um, strict time frames if uh, someone is running late. So this is very will be bad manners. This person probably probably wait for you or will leave. But this is definitely will be the last meeting with you if you're running late, very late. Especially if you're never um, informed person that you're running late. And there are think about running late actually it's not um regarding low context cultures just like let's remember if you're running late for each minute you're running late your message or informed person and stay in two minutes for example if you're running late five minutes late you say i'm going to be in 10 minutes if you're running late 10 minutes you say i'm going to be in 20 minutes rather than in the opposite way and also the last criteria and a lot of context culture is open and flexible. So these people are never pay attention or uh, oh, this is my brother or brother of my father. This is why I will prioritize him. So they are open and flexible for all types, uh, minority, genders, and anyone. Okay. Do you have questions about it? So far, okay, and here are the um, cultures American, Australian, Dutch, English, Canadian, English, Finnish, German, Israeli, New Zealand, Scandinavian, and Swiss. So, did you ever have um, any type of relationship, business, social, friendship, uh, or any type of relationship with uh, opposite um, context cultures? If yes, can you share and type? Was it difficult? 
like do you, do you now understand most probably when you have a misunderstanding of something it's not because this person is stubborn or not enough open-minded or something it's just because of their context of their culture and you absolutely need to put onto consideration especially being on event and you understand for example if you're you are from high context cultures the people around you can be from low context cultures and they're slightly different and you need to find the approach to these people and knowing this information it will be much diff much easier i'd say that regularly uh, the, the, uh english people who are quite indirect <laughs> yeah i understand what you mean and <laughs> yeah i try to adapt um to, to more to more complex culture because of this fire being raised in russia i'm fine with that uh, yeah i agree with you okay let's go to the next slide ending show so here is a more about um, how to look confident, basically physically how to look confident. So here is about how standing tall, standing tall, how to stand in tall confidently. I already was saying about the, your back, yeah, but first of all, it's the shoulders. Your shoulders always need to be open. So, and uh, look very parallel to the water so it's, it's need to be like a half circle especially when you are talking to someone sometimes even it works when you are tall and people are shorter than you for example that's my problem because i'm quite tall and a lot of people are shorter than me this is why i'm trying to um um show my interest more to them this is why i try to lean towards them and I found it a big is as a big mistake, and I saw it on some videos and the photos. It was a it used to be a lot of pictures, and my shoulders were looking to the people that were not parallel. This is why you need to have an eye contact, but your shoulders need to stay still, as well as the back. This needs to be straight. Mm, these rules are very important because the way you look, the way you walk, it shows your personality. And if your purpose is to be a um, commercially successful artist, you need to look confident. So, as well as the eye contact. Eye contact always needs to be direct. I know sometimes it's very difficult and it's a lot of people, a lot of people around you, someone saying hello to you and you sometimes uh, is distracted because you need to reply at the same time you talk to someone, but try to avoid it and talk to the people and having all this eye contact. Also the chin is very important. Look as my chin is um, moving in a different way. It's a whole talk. But too high chin, it will look a um, bit of like a selfish person. Or if my chin will be too low, it will look like a um, kind of pretentious person or even unconfident person. So the chin always needs to be parallel to the floor. This is how it shows your confidence. And on the picture is the Princess Leticia. And it's a very great example of how she keeps her posture very straight and she looks always perfect and confident, as well as arms. So, and if we go to the next slide. So, here is also an example of the chin. See, if it's the first of them is how to, the chin is in the perfect position. Here is too selfish. And if you look, if it's too low, see how it looks like. Next slide, please. So here is an example of the Princess Letizia. Have a look. It's also, uh, everything is straight. 
your legs, your arms are parallel of your body and your chin is also parallel of the floor. So, and this is how I want you guys to look on any image. This is, this is how you will perfectly. Imagine this painting behind these people was painted by her. And imagine this person who is um, holding a hand, also the painter. Who would you pay more money if? as a client if the painting were uh, the queen you see sam sorry she's a queen already or the man yeah the difference yeah do you feel the difference um one of the girls i know here in the uk um she is a painter and she is always painting her uh, paintings wearing a dress and not like some random dress from H&M or mass market, like proper um, kind of, um, I would not say the luxury brands, um, but nice brands of clothes or of uh, dresses. And this is how she represents herself as, this is how I feel my confidence and it's, prints onto my paintings as well my confidence which i create from my look and from my mood okay let's go to the other okay another example the other slide okay in arms a few words about arms so if you are standing in someone is especially if some you need to stand someone say the speech at the front of uh, each other and you need to stay still so this is a very different way of how to hold your arms first of all is closed in the front like this so the arms are you standing and you close in like in the um lock like this in your arms standing like this if you're not holding a glass or something or so Second is a closed back like this. That works very good for a man, especially the um, Prince Philip used to like to do and uh, hold his um, hands closed back. But it also works for if you are like lady but wearing a suit. But if you are in a dress, better probably close it to come. And also on the sides, it looks perfectly unlike on the picture from the right hand side. Okay, let's go to the other slide. So here is position which is very popular, especially on the different types of CV or so. Um, the, sometimes people think that it shows you as a confident person, but unfortunately is not 100% uh, correct because this person shows, shows you as like your, um, it's a closed position, it's a negative position. If you are chatting to someone, you never, never ever keep your hands um, closed like so, because this is kind of, you show that you're closed and you don't want to be asked any question, you want to Finish conversation as fast as possible. So when you are told you need your body needs to be open to the people, this is how and verbally you will see that you are open for conversation. And if that possible, if it doesn't click with your uh, with your um, I don't know way of your style of your personality, don't put it on the CV. But if it's, if it's your personal style, if it's shows your personality if your artworks are about closeness or something yeah you obviously do it so first of all you put your own personality and then the etiquette rules okay so here i finished this big topic about um, self-presentation guys do you have so far any questions before i start the uh, say a few words about business correspondence Please think about, digest a little bit. Yeah, I have a question actually, uh, mm -hmm. maybe even two questions. So, uh, bear with me a second. Right, uh, 
do is there is there a great, good idea to research uh, some maybe more or less famous guests that might or not might not be present at the upcoming event so that I'm more prepared about oh uh, well like the overall composition of the group I'm about to meet if that makes sense of course yes if you're if, if the purpose of your meeting is commercial success or you are kind of indirectly selling selling your paintings or any artworks here yeah, you need to very detailed research all people who will be there if that possible you need to ask them if, if you have um, um connection with the horse you can ask horse who will be there if it's open open information or if first for example this um event courses on the facebook you can open the members who will be there and research the each person who will be there this is the best way of um to know who will be there and who will be at of course if you are commercially interested of who will be there Right. Okay. Thanks. And I have another question. Um, it's a bit of a fun one, but anyway, I think it's like it, it has a grain of truth to it. So, suppose um, I am at the event, and uh, I see a quite a famous person from the circle that I'm in, and furthermore, is the person I admire as a professional, for example. Um, so, how do I behave and how do I approach them if I want to approach them so that I am not seen as a crazy fan? <laughs> well, basically, just to put it more seriously, what is the polite way to approach people that I feel are much higher on the social and professional level ladder, and I would really like to try and connect with them, but I would want to make it as politely as I can? Yeah, first of all, social events, it's not about the profession, as in, it's not about talking about work and stuff. Uh, this is why you just approach a person and you are talking to one of the appropriate topics. You never mention the, oh my God, this is you, or I heard about you, many things. You're talking as if you never meet this person. And then if he or she mention anything about it, you can slightly say, oh, oh, that's very interesting. Oh, now I remember where I saw your face. Oh nice to meet you I'm, I'm really glad i i met you in person so this is how you speak in that way but in the social events you are it's also um speaking about profession or asking about profession it's also the question about money about salary this is what we were talking previously you never mentioned or so yeah. Do you more or less understand how smoothly uh, move to this way? Yeah. Yeah, that okay. makes sense. Thanks. I think Zhenya also has a mm -hmm. similar question. Uh, if there is a sense of having already some topic starter phrase and using to start a conversation, and how to stop a conversation if you don't want to communicate with someone? So to start, there is not the. Um, um, one format of over topics because I don't want to put the same um, ways to say because it will be very unnatural to speak using the same phrases. So you need to adapt to the exact way. For example, when we were topic about we were talking about the appropriate topic, I gave you some examples of how to start. Yeah. Or better to, uh, to start with the uh, topic or better to start. for example if you are next to the food or drinks and you're like you can say and someone is standing next to you and just took something and you can say oh so many different starters or is it is any recommendation so the person will say oh i like this one i tried this Peace or something like this. They say, Oh, thank you very much. And this is how you start. By the way, my name is Marie, and nice to meet you. And the person will say, Nice to meet you too. I know it's very difficult because you're always afraid to um, be ignored. Because the person could say, Sorry. But if you're on this event, which means already all people by default want to be introduced. 
So don't be afraid. So if you're in a particular party, means all the people on the same boat and all people wants to know as many people as possible. So don't be afraid to be first. And you will see, it will be a great because as more people you know, as more people you will be introduced, as more popular you will be, as more followers you will have, and maybe out of 15 followers, you will have one client of yours. Uh, okay, and the second part of the question, and how to stop conversation if I don't want to communicate with someone? Okay, there is a... Um, um, one one of the great methods to do it first of all if you're talking to someone and you see this person is talking about politic religion anything whatever you need to find unfortunately you need to find the victim so you see someone uh, approaching you or someone following past the person you know and you're saying oh jack let me introduce to my friend jack you introduce him jack to that person you don't want to talk anymore and they start to talk and then you're saying oh wow, i need a minute and you're just leaving so this is this is you are not being rude so not leaving the person alone if the person doesn't know what to do so this is how you just leave him and then just start to chat with someone it will be very rude to say unfortunately i need to leave and if you're saying not the truth, I mean, 15 minutes, the, these people who you said you're going to leave, you will, will see you on the other corner with the other people. So better not to lie that you have to leave. Or you can say, for example, you can fake the phone call and say, oh, someone, I need to talk. I'm getting back to you in, in a minute. So, it needs to be 100% in uh, direct. Do we still use business cards? Of course, yes. We, we still use the business cards. We still pass in them. And business cards we pass uh, with the name facing to the person, not to you. So turn the card's name face to the person and give with your right hand. So in the Eastern countries, such as Japan or even China, you pass in the card with two hands, just like so. So this is how also the difference. This is why this literature and just the basic rules of knowing the difference between culture can will play positive towards you. Because if you will speak to someone from Japan, you will pass the card with two hands being in europe this person will 100 percent appreciate this gesture will definitely put you tick as a special person okay and also about visit cards there is also specific rules and on my the whole course of uh social etiquette i'm, I'm telling you about the difference of uh, visit cards and how they supposed to look like their format their length and height and everything so but today we have everything all uh, together so okay um if you'll have any other questions just type them and then we'll continue with the business correspondence because we run out out, out of the time so but everything else will be more briefly because the main topic will already um pass because the speaking um conversation more conversational moments are the most important okay the business correspondence is also very important because the way you are communicating in the um writing also shows you as your personality as your professionalism um on the next slide i want i would like to show you the exam um the example um of the conversation but i forgot about this slide and i'm going to tell you about first of all about bread and butter letter so is anyone of you knows what is bread and butter letter uh send any reaction if you know no i can see only um <laughs> what you don't know okay bread and butter letter basically this is the short um 
message or email of appreciation of a person. For example, if you're inviting people to your exhibition and you see all people who attended it on the next day, it will be a very nice gesture to send the email or message, at least message to each of them saying, um, hello, Evgenia, I was really happy to see you yesterday. I hope you enjoyed the exhibition and spent a really nice time and met a lot of new people. Many thanks, Anna. Okay, this is a bread and butter letter. If you invite someone on your birthday and uh, people attend it on your birthday, the next day, um, hello, Anna, it was really nice to see you yesterday on the birthday. Hope you liked and enjoyed the birthday and cake. Thanks, Maria, or so. Okay, so, and then in the next uh, slide, I will tell you, I'll show you the example of um, British way of the business correspondence. So why British? First of all, because I live in Great Britain, but secondly, but most important thing, because British business correspondence is the most formal correspondence among all I ever met in my entire life. Even the European way of um, sending emails are less formal because we just basically say, um, hello, maybe how are you or something like this. If you we know the person, then the general topic and thank you or the kind regards and the name. But in the uh, British correspondence here is a little bit more complicated, but on the next slide, I split this um, email to a few different topics. Here will be a few words in Russian because I prepared it previously for a Russian audience. So if you don't speak Russian, ignore everything what highlights it in uh, yellow. Or yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is a, uh, six different points. So first of all is pre presentation. So you say, um, so first of all, I would like to say this is a real email I received from uh, some um, um, online store. So basically, I needed to make a return and I somewhere lost invoice and I just asked them to send me invoice so I can I could print it. And uh, they got back to me with this email. So and I found this email as the perfect example of a British way of um, business correspondence. Also, post this as an example. If you will be sending email in a very formal way. Again, be adaptable. Um, try to chat with the people in a different way. So if you see a pe person is a casual, so you write down also email in a casual way. But if you see someone is very, or especially if it's for, if it's a like commercial order for potential commercial order for a commercial organization. So this is 100% the way we need to uh, chat. So, okay, secondly, you need to say the words of a thank you for contacting me or um, something like the classical way, I hope you're well. And I know in the internet it's a lot of uh, jokes regarding this way, I hope you're well, not a way, and it's a very bad way of because it's very standard. But if you don't know the person, if you never chat with them, so this is absolutely fine to say, I hope you're well. If you already know the person, if you met them, you need to a little bit customize this phrase. Instead of saying, I hope you're well, I hope you enjoyed the networking last week. I hope you'll spend amazing time on the exhibition or so. Or I hope you spend a really nice weekend in Sri Lanka or so. Somewhere, if you know what that happened, the person mentioned here before. So, um, then the next point is oh, I put two times two to two. Okay. Third point, which which mine is first, is also you are here. I'm trusting. I'm so sorry. This see on, on this example, the person who is responding to me, the customer service specialist, is say, I'm so sorry, but you are missing your return paperwork. But you missed your invoice. They are so sorry. It doesn't mean the person is 
say, sitting on their at their desk and really sorry, crying, worrying that I um, lost my invoice. But this is the way of uh, formal communication. So if it's something negative, you can express your kind of politeness uh, by um, um, saying something like this. Or you can say, first of all, I'm really glad that you attended an exhibition. First of all, I, I'm really glad that I met you. Or first of all, and adapt for your purposes. And then the next point is the actual topic of your message. So basically, number four, the paragraph number four is the actual topic that you are messaging and why you messaging. So here you can put, here is example of my works. Here is, uh, I would like to provide you an invoice. Here is the this or that. Wherever you uh, would like to put on this email. And then before you just wishing a good day or wishing anything wherever or the person is would like to go on some weekend somewhere if you know this. If it's the first message or first email and you don't know this person, you can just ignore number five. So number six, it's your um, name and certain kind regards or best or many thanks or whatever it's. Here is a lot of examples in the internet where you can find how to put your um, writing your name and surname. Also, under that, the only thing you need to put your contact phone number, your email address. Even if you are writing down from the same email address, you have to put the email address also under your uh, signature. And also the um, links to the social media. If you can link it, make as a live link. If you can't, just put uh, your name and uh, phone name, how to find you on um, any social media. <clears throat> Do you have any questions? Yes. Okay. Um, is it the last? Um, yeah, the last. Yeah, okay. That's not <laughs> okay. And then I would like to get back to a little bit um, to the table etiquette um, about buffet. So basically, at a lot of meetings, a lot of events, networking, social, or any kind of events, you have a buffet. So you have uh, any drink, sometimes even some starters. Um, so I just, this is just a very small ticks and trips, how to just look more professional and look more elegant. And again, this is all about self-confidence. If you look self-confident, if you're holding your glass confidently and elegantly, this is also adds you the value to your works and as a professional, because who needs to buy the paintings of a successful person nowadays? Piece of, People buying, maybe it's not correct word to say, maybe, maybe it's you will scratch your soul, but a lot of people buying, buying artworks of successful people look successful. And uh, people who they can read in their mind, mind that self confident person. And um, being confident and uh, eating and drinking confidently and elegantly also one of the very important things because if you're um if you're a very intelligent person if you can speak any topics and you know all the painters um in the world but you are like spitting around or just try to put in your mouth everything all all the food on the table that's just crossing all your value completely I would like to start with the glass because the glasses, drinks are always and everywhere. Here I have an example of the glass. This is a typical um, champagne smooth, which is um, usually, especially in the first previews on the exhibitions, you can see them here, there, and everywhere. So, and people usually 
drink champagne like this and talk. So, um, unfortunately, this is not the, how correctly calls the champagne flute and all the glasses with the steam. So, the correct way of how to hold it is on with the steam, like so. So, you're drinking champagne, you're holding like so. And then you drink, you have to look onto the bottle of the glass, not around drink and look around or even at the person unfortunately you are talking to so this is just one or two seconds of the seat you drink to the bottom of the glass and you continue to have an eye contact so this is a bad etiquette to drink and look around so in great britain in the 60s even was the very um, um, fashionable especially in the tea rooms which were spread widely to have even um, some advertisement on the bottom of the cup tea cup so because people knew the rules from from their childhood from 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 the nursery from the school they learned how to drink tea and look to the bottom this is how they were drinking tea and look to the bottom the reading advertisement so probably with this kind of fact, you will definitely remember that rule. Yeah, some people are holding a glass like so, holding on the bottom of the steam. So this is also the correct way. But for example, if you're drinking something like um, the honey cocktails, for example, like apple spritz, that will be a little bit wobbly, start wobbling if you will be drinking. So it will look like he knows or he knows the rule he read the rules but he doesn't know how to practically use it and he's just trying to be elegant but but cannot deal with this glass and the glasses are wobbling so you are you take a glass first like so if you feel it's quite light you can just move like this and drink like so and hold the glass like this if you are chatting to someone so on on the middle on the um, the base of the uh, glass. If it's the red wine, sometimes people think what well, I can hold like so, but this is not the truth actually, because people say that the, the red wine is supposed to be the room temperature, but this is not the truth because the red wine also served with the temperature from eighteen till twenty one degrees depending on the type of the wine so which is also uh, below the room temperature with, with the red wine you also hold glass like so um and also if you're holding the glass without steam you're hold on the bottom of the glass like so not like this or like that especially because it will be remain a lot of fingerprints which are also not look very nice when you're holding or for example you're you're greeting someone and like a handshake or something and you again holding differently in a different place and all your glasses already in your fingerprints also doesn't look really nice also the rule for the ladies women if you're wearing the lipstick so and if you're drinking from the glass um first of all try to keep your lipstick um, which not prints the uh, lipstick from from the lips so you just um put like a tissue or dry just use the um very good good like the tint or so instead of the actual lipstick so but if you forgot about this rule and if it's the um, color of the lipstick glass try to drink from the same side all the time instead of drinking from all the sides and well the whole diameter will be covered in the lipstick uh, regarding the starches and the food you eat in, so usually it's something served the small bites, something on the one bite, and it's very rare when people serve 
the place, the small place for starters. Usually they just serve nothing. And instead of just taking something from the plate and pushing onto your mouth, you first take the paper napkin, put the starter from the serving plate onto the paper napkin, and then eat. And you have to take no more than two different types of uh, food once onto the tissue so, and then eat them um, from it. So this is the small rules uh, regarding the table etiquette. And, and yeah, I think it's very obvious, but still I have to say that if uh, you're um, talking to someone, have very small bites because if suddenly someone will then ask you any questions and you are showing sure that's not going to look very nice. So, okay, do you have any questions? Yeah, there's a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. In Belgrade, we often have plastic cups on an exhibition opening. Where should I put it after I finish but can't see a trash? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, as better glasses on an exhibition as more formal and there's more expectation from the host of how to rule. If it's a plastic glasses, means it's a less expectation from the host of how to deal with this. So if you're a very cultural person and you are think well, it's not really good to put them in it's not trash anywhere around, you just go to the ladies, which is the toilet in the uh, very delicate British language. So I'm just put them in a traditional toilet. If you are fine with that and you don't really mind, you just can put it on the corner of the table. Because like I said, if the host didn't prepare the trash and didn't prepare anything, so he doesn't have an expectation of being a perfectly um, person who is going to um, follow all the rules. Do you have any more questions? I think I run out of my, of my questions as well. <laughs> if nobody has any questions, shall we slowly but surely wrap up? Okay. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, uh, just so you know, I've uh, taken uh, the temporary role of mediating this just because uh, Jane's uh, connection is a bit suboptimal today. So <clears throat> that's why I've taken over. But yeah, uh, right. Thank you, Masha. It was amazing. From my side, I can say that it's, uh, it's a whole new bunch of things I've learned today. Okay, guys, thank you so much too for attending uh, this webinar and for you guys who will be watching or just listening in, in recordings. And I would really appreciate if you will follow my Instagram account and uh, just see more of my etiquette rules or everything. And if you have any questions regarding anything or everything or just share your experience or how my rules helped you or everything or just would like to just chat with me on any topic you can um dm me and i will always will be happy to chat with you in private thank you so much i was really happy to see all of you unfortunately i didn't have a chance to know and to chat with you about everything it just was uh, I, I knew about few of you who what uh, your uh, professional uh, profile. Uh, yeah, and actually, I'll I'll uh, uh, I, I'll just like to add that uh, first of all, yeah, as Masha has already mentioned, you can message her, but also uh, Masha maybe is too uh, polite and shy not to mention it, but she also does private consultations if somebody wants to dive deeper into that. So that's a bit of an advertisement to you, Masha. Um, but uh, there's more than that. So because Co-op Arts is a non-profit organization that's uh, built by artists for artists, especially for displaced artists who are at the beginning of their career, obviously the main goal of Co-op Arts team is to 
uh, grow the mutual support to grow basically to grow a community where you can have mutual support and get answers to the questions that bother you so uh leading to that if anybody watching this webinar right now or in recording has any suggestions or questions about uh, the etiquette that we've discussed today or maybe has a request for another web webinar please get in touch if you would like to uh, see more webinars by Masha also get in touch and maybe propose any topics that uh, are on your mind and we'll see what we can do uh, so yeah that's uh, all the pep talk I wanted to give <laughs> Masha, thank you again. It was awesome. Um, brilliant as always, honestly. And thank you, thank everybody, you for joining today. And on this positive note, I would like to say thank you again and goodbye to you. Yes. Hopefully, until next time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stopping the recording. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Ah, no, so, bye.